1 John 1 and 5. The Bible says, This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. Lord Jesus, we pray tonight that your grace will rest mightily upon us by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before you're seated, tell somebody, walk it out. Amen. You may be seated. We're in a series on Wednesday nights called Walk It Out, learning how to walk this thing out. Uh, walk in love, walk in light, walk in truth, and then the last one will be walk in faithfulness. And tonight I want to deal with walk in light. Everybody say walk in light. All right. Look at verse 7 with me uh, one more time. But if we walk in the light or to live in the light, and the light there is the light that is caused or created by fire. If you've ever lit a campfire in the middle of a night out in the, in the wilderness or a camping area, you'll know that that, light, that fire light gives off a lot of light. Allows you to see in the dark. It says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have or we share fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus or the shed blood of Jesus, his son, purifies or cleanses us from all sin. And the word sin there also is associated with the idea of guilt. Not just the sin itself, but the guilt of sin. Amen. All right. Walking in the light. What does it mean? Now, John has been addressing in this particular epistle the idea of different kinds of light. He teaches on light as opposed to some of the, uh, the Gnostic, what's called the Gnostic, or the, the, the people who thought that they had a clue, uh, different forms of receiving uh, uh, information or knowledge. Uh, to, the word gnosis comes, is where we get that word, Gnostic teachings, things that are just off of center, things that aren't correctly right, they're not uh, accurately, uh, they're not doctrin doctrinally accurate. And so he's been dealing with that with the church, and he said, we're going to make sure that we stay in the light. We're going to make sure that we stay connected to and close by the light. So he deals with this then, teaching on light. And when he says, walk in the light, he's telling us and causing us to understand that a genuine Christian, because he defines it pretty well in here, in verses 5 through 7, a genuine Christian walks habitually in the light. Habitually, consistently in the light. Now, the word light there, while it deals with the idea of the light that's produced by a fire, it intimates or gives to us the idea or the understanding of truth and devotion. Walking in truth and walking in devotion. Walking in consecration, walking in commitment, making sure you don't get pulled away, making sure you don't get tossed aside, making sure you're not blown about by every wind of doctrine, whether it's a, a false doctrine or some false teaching. And there's a lot of false teaching going on in the church right now, in different churches. I will just tell you that. Uh, not only that, but associated with the church. I, I just found out about something called the, the, the Christian Witches uh, ministry. There's going to be a, a conference held this year by a woman who is promoting Christian witchcraft. That's an oxymoron. One of the most powerful, I, well, let, me, let me take that back, not powerful, but uh, uh, influential, large churches in, in Northern California up in the Reading area. They're, they're going around and holding Christian tarot card readings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus. That's a deception. Don't ever fall for that. I had a preacher tell me a long time ago, if it ain't written, it ain't fitting. If you can't find it in the Word, it doesn't belong in your life. 
So John is real strong on this thing, letting us know that to walk in the light means to walk habitually in the truth and in devotion to the truth and to the Lord. You don't walk in darkness. He says in verse 5, he says, God is light. Everybody say that with me. God is light. So to walk in that light that God is, is to live free from darkness. I'm going to stay in the light. I'm going to stay in the truth. I'm going to walk in devotion to the truth. I'm going to stay close to the truth. I'm not going to let go of the truth. I'm not going to be swept away. I'm not going to be influenced. I'm not going to be uh, 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 moved on or, 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 or put upon by some new wind of doctrine or some new teaching or something that sounds good. I've got to stay in the truth. I've got to stay in the Word. To walk in the light is to live in such a way, watch this, that a person is enlightened by the truth of God who is the light. My life then is influenced. My life is enlightened. The dark areas of my understanding are, 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 are cleared. I'm able to see things. I'm able to discern. I'm able to, to click quickly and, and clearly uh, distinguish between truth and error, between dark and light, between what is false and what is real, between what somebody says is God and what God is not or God is. You're able to understand that. How? Because we walk in the light because God is the light and the truth of God lives in our hearts. Now watch this because it is the incarnate Christ or Jesus in the flesh. That's what incarnate means. Encarne, in meat, in flesh. Incarnate. Jesus in flesh. Jesus came to the world. He came from heaven and he was wrapped in flesh. That's why we call it the incarnation. Are you following me? So the incarnate Christ, the Messiah, is the light that continues to shine in the darkness of a world that tries to exclude him. He continues to shine in the darkness of a world that tries to exclude him. Do you realize that people have a problem with Jesus? You can be in a workplace, in a setting, everybody talking about Buddha and Krishna and, and the latest thing that's going on, whatever it might be, the latest philosophy or the latest ilk or the latest thought in, in, in New Age philosophy, and everybody's with it. Oh, wow, that's great. Oh, inclusion this, and, 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 and oh, that's wonderful. But you never, we never did it before. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's new. It's wonderful. It, we need to embrace it. The devil is a liar. But you bring up Jesus? Oh, yeah, can, I, can, can I just tell you about Jesus? Can you, uh, hello? Ain't nobody trying to hear about Jesus. Everything else, watch this, that is darkness will fade into the darkness. Oh, God. Darkness envelops itself. God. That we, do you realize how many false teachings, you, you realize how many false, False ideas has, have come ever since the gospel came upon the earth. There's been literally thousands of them. They don't even exist anymore. And so the devil has to keep creating new forms of darkness. He has to keep creating new lies. He has to keep hatching new things that seem to be truth that aren't. Why? Because the darkness will envelop itself. But light stands. And when light stands, it releases a power that breaks darkness loose and darkness has to go. Come on, light. if you've ever been in this room or anyone that without any light, this place is pitch dark. Light one little light though. And you can see and you can find your way and you can know where you're going and you're safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus stands in the middle of a darkened world, every form of darkness has to flee and it has to run and it has to find a place to be dissolved into. It has to be consumed by itself because the light who is Christ uh, reveals his brilliance and his splendor and everything else has to move out of the way. And when it does, you're safe. When it does, you can find your way. When it does, when that, when that happens, you know exactly where you are. Well, stumble around in the darkness, trip over stuff, fall down, knock yourself out. But what? When the light comes, you know where you are. I know where I am now. 
I got my bearings now. I know where I am. Oh, there's the wall, and there's the outlet, and there's the, the hallway, and there's the stairs. Amen. Jesus helps you to find your way. People trying to snuff him out. You can't snuff the light out. You can't get rid of the light of Christ. His light is eternal. John talks about then walking in that eternal light. Believers are faced then with a choice because the world is trying to exclude Christ. The world is trying to uh, uh, put out the light of Jesus. I mean, am I, am I, am I talking out of turn? Is, is the world trying to exclude Jesus from everything? Come on, somebody. Get him out of the schools. They already did that. And we wonder why we have the, the disaster. When I was going to school, we got up in the morning in school and, and, and we prayed. We did the pledge, the pledge to allegiance. One nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. You can't find the pledge to allegiance in this country anywhere now. And then we wonder why they have people being, kids being killed all over the United States in schools. Why? Because they got Jesus out and let the devil in. I can't get no help in here. I said they got Jesus out and let the devil in. Teaching gender equality. Teaching all this nonsense. All this stuff that comes straight out of the pit of hell. You have a choice. As a believer. John's saying, this is not just cute language. He's telling you this. Believers are faced with a choice. Choice either to walk in the light or to walk in darkness. God's word is the light. And the light is God's continuing irrevocable gift to you and to me. The light of the word keeps burning. The fire keeps burning. Do you know this book has been around for centuries? It has never been extinguished. Amen. They've tried to burn it out of existence. They've tried to take it away from countries and nations. But it keeps finding its way into places where they said it would never be. Why? Because the word has the power to enter the deepest recesses of a person's being. John says, walk in the light. That continuing, irrevocable gift to believers. God's word is the light that enables us to live in and to experience, watch this, the theological affirmation of its author. I'm going to say it again. That's a mouthful. God's word is the light that enables us to live in, everybody say live in, and to experience, everybody say experience, the theological affirmation of its author. In other words, you can read a book by somebody and say, wow, that's a really interesting book. I learned a lot from it, but you really won't know that much about it because why? Because you don't know the author or the author is dead or it was written by a, by a pseudonym. But when you read the word of God, you can know the author. You say, oh, I know the author personally. I read a great book. The, oh, I was read Gone with the Wind. Well, whoever wrote it is dead. But guess what? The author of this book is alive. And you have the privilege of telling somebody, I live and I read a book that is constantly giving me light to expose my darkness, and I know the author personally. John makes it clear then that God's purpose is to bring his people into the position of light. He says, walk in the light. Look at verse 7 one more time. But if we walk in the light as he is the light. It's God's purpose to bring you into a position of light. Everybody say position. That means that God puts me somewhere and puts you somewhere 
whereby and in which you and I can receive understanding and we can have discernment and we have knowledge and we can have truth that sets us free and causes us to walk in the understanding of who God is and what he wants for our lives. And it's a position. You can't get me out of it. I can't get you out of it. Once God positions you, once God positions you, nothing can take you out of it. You're positioned in the light right now. Amen. I, I'm standing here, and I'm, I, th- these, these stage lights, those big ones up there that, that light up this whole place, they're positioned, they're focused here. Can I tell you the light of God is focused on you right now? Amen. Right now. You're not in the darkness, you're in the light. You're, you're not in the darkness, you're in the light. You're not in the darkness, you're in the light. Amen. And so then the question is, if, if he's put us in the position of light, the question then is, are we walking in the light? I might be, uh, I might be positioned in the light, but am I walking in the light? I can walk out of the light. Where I can walk in the light. See, I can get way over here, and I'm in the shade. Now I'm in the darkness. I'm not, I'm not in that light anymore. Everything changes. The dimensions, the, 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 the visage, everything about what I look like right now changes. I'm going to get in the dark. Now, watch. Everything's starting to become clearer. Watch. Look, look, look. I'm in the light now. Look. Look. Everything changes. Everything comes into focus. You see things that you can't see. So when God puts you in the light, stay there. Stay in the light. Walk in the light. Live in the light. So the question is, are we walking in the light? See, I might be positionally put in the light, but am I practically living in the light? Everything in the Word of God and everything in the Christian life is both positional and practical. I'm sanctified, but I work out my sanctification. I'm I'm holy, but I walk out my holiness. I'm made a certain. That's why the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It doesn't mean you're not saved. It doesn't mean you have to to work for your salvation. It doesn't mean you have to do something to make your salvation work. You're already saved. But I got to live this thing out. I got to let it influence me. I got to stay in the light. I got to walk it out and live in it so it has an effect on me, in me, and through me into other people's lives. So the question then is, I might be positionally in the light, but am I practically in the light? John exhorts Christians then not to walk in the darkness. Now watch this, but notice that he never says, let there be no darkness in you. Mm. He never says, let there be no darkness in you. Why? Because he's not saying to us, when he says walk in the light, he's not saying that true Christians are without a trace of sin. That's a lie. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we make God a liar and we're liars. No, you and I have sin. And, and so that's why he, he doesn't say that. Why? Because he is not dealing with the idea of darkness as a synonym for indwelling sin. A lot of people read this and think, oh, the darkness, that's the sin. No, that's not what he's talking about at all. The darkness is simply the absence of light. Darkness is the absence of light. Darkness is the absence of truth. Darkness and light are realities that are within each one of us. Paul says, the good that I want to do, I don't do. Thing I wish I didn't do, I do. Thing I want to do, I don't do. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Praise be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord who has given us the victory. But they're there. So you never had an ugly thought in your life since you got saved. No, it's there. The reality is this, is that darkness and light are realities that are within each one of us, and darkness and light are opposing forces, each making their competing claims upon us. 
They live in you. The light is pulling on you. The dark is pulling on you. The lack of light is pulling on you, and the light is pulling on you. The lack of truth is pulling on you, and the truth is pulling on you. Deception wants to lead you into a different direction and a different uh, understanding, but the light of God in the Word of God through the truth of the power of the Holy Spirit calls on you and says, stay right where you are. Stay in the light. You're positionally in the light. Let's stay practically in the light. Don't go into the dark. Don't go into the realm of, the, of, of what is not true concerning the Word of God and who you are in God and who God is in you. We're challenged then to decide in which position we will choose to live. Every day you wake up, you and I are challenged to decide where we're going to live. I can live in truth or I can walk in darkness. I can walk in a deception and listen to the enemy. Or I can listen to the voice of God. I can read something that twists, that distorts my understanding of who I am or who God is. Or I can read the word of God and that will tell me exactly who I am and who God is. There's a choice every single day of your life. I will tell you this. If you, elicit, if you go into the dark place and you stay in that darkness and you listen to the devil and you listen to the dark thoughts that are in your own mind, okay, I'm the only one. It will tell you, those dark thoughts will tell you that you have no hope, that you have no future, that you're going to be a failure, that everything in your life is going to go sideways, everything's going to be a disaster and destruction, and, and you're going to lose your children, you're going to lose your money, you're going to lose your house, you're going to lose your, everything you have, and the devil's going to destroy and The devil wants to keep you right there in that darkness. But if I stay in the light, ah, God, if I lean toward the light, if I let the light pull on me and I pull on the light, then I'm going to hear God say, you're mine. I bought you. You're redeemed. You belong to me. You're secure in me. I got you in the hollow of my hand. No one can snatch you out of my hand. You're mine. You're like the apple of my eye. My favor is on your life. No one can touch you. You belong to me. I'm surrounding you. I I got angels surrounding your life. The demons can't have you. The devil can't have you. You're my chosen possession. You're my treasured possession. You're my child. Walk in the light. That's what it means to walk in the light. Not just a catchphrase that we put on, you know, Instagram, walk in the light. No, that's what it means to walk in the light. There are unifying threads. Just like this, 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 this little handkerchief is made up of threads, and they all come together, and they unify to make this. My, my shirt, your clothes, all made of threads, and they're unified. Different kinds of thread, different kind of fabric, different kinds of substance, all woven together to make something that you can utilize and wear. The same thing is true with the Word of God. There are unifying threads woven through the pattern of walking in the light that give us an understanding of God's character. All these things that God is working at, working at and working in. That's why I said we know that, that God works in all things for the good of those who love him. God's pulling every single strand together. Every thread is being pulled together. They're all over them, and you're going, I don't know how you're going to make sense out of this. I don't get that. And, and it, well, there's a red thread over there, and there's some blue stuff over there. That's heavenly realities, and there's the blood of Jesus, and there's some white thread over there. Talk about the, the purity of the Holy Ghost. And there's you go, all these threads all over the place, and we got some stuff. I don't even know what that is. And God, don't worry. I'm weaving it all together. Don't worry. I'm knitting it all together. Don't worry. I know how to put this together. Don't worry, I'm joining this one to that one to that one to that, and I'm going to make a garment of light. God, I feel that. I'm going to make a garment of light for you to wear. Hallelujah. 
Where you walk in that garment, you walk and darkness has to flee. Darkness has to get out of your way. I'm robed in light. I'm covered in light. I'm surrounded by light. Those unifying threads that are woven together give us an understanding of the character of God. Everything depends on and flows from that pattern. Everything in your life is dependent on what God is doing. There's a matrix, there's a, there's a paradigm, there's a pattern, there's a blueprint that God is working out in you. He's putting it all together. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say he's putting it all together. The very nature of God is light, and His character must shape our lives, shape our character as well. Watch, as we fellowship with Him, walking in the light of God. He says, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, watch, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus' His Son purifies us from all sin. In other words, the ongoing process of what God has initiated and started in your life and in my life is going to continue. I'm continually being purified even though I'm already positionally purified. I'm already free from sin even though I'm already, I'm already free from sin and I get set free from sin as I walk. As I stay in fellowship with God, it's an ongoing process as I let the light of God flow in my life and move out every ounce and every element of the darkness of the enemy. Tonight, I just want you to know by the power of the Holy Ghost that you can walk in the light. I want you to get up tomorrow morning. Look yourself in the mirror. It might be a scary thing. I will venture to say and prophesy it is. I know from experience. But no matter what's going on, I want you to stand up, look in the mirror, and just say, I am walking today in the light of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And watch. Watch. Watch every darkness flee out of your way. Stand to your feet. Lord, thank you for your word. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Allow us to understand what we've heard, to receive by the Spirit, and to envelop and to imbibe and to live in the truth of your word as your grace, great grace, much grace, special favor rests upon your people tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.